Hello guys, thank you for joining us today. Tito Max, I'm joined by Tito. So we'll be discussing the debt issue of our country, corruption, and everything in between. Karibuni sana. So, uh, so Tito, there's a lot of noise that has been made. Um, everyone apparently seems to hate Uhuru Kenyatta uh, because of how everyone is talking about he's taken us into so much debt. What, what is your opinion on all that? All that is true. Um, I think I think all that is true. What you're saying, mm-hmm. um, there's been so much um, anger going around. I think everyone has been angry, even yourself. Although where we are called. Um, we can't. We can't rely on you. No, we I can't rely on your anger. <laughs> Why are you saying I have been angry? I have, I have not been angry. In fact, the last time we met, you were very much against Uhuru. Right now, you you are about to campaign for him to go an extra two years. No, it's no, just no, unacceptable. No. You see, yeah, just a minute. I want to. I want to get my facts right before we continue. So that good. So anyway, first of all, where, where are you getting your facts? From? No, no. Let, let's continue. So the thing is, Tito, uh, when it comes to. Um, uh, Kenyans have, uh, have been very mad about these uh, massive projects and people saying Kenya is going to default on no, not Kenya, Kenya is going to default uh, Uhuru is going to put us into a very bad uh, debt situation and uh, in fact he already have, has no, he's not going to do it he's not, already done it but now you see one thing you need to understand Tito uh, COVID is to blame for some of the problems that we're having um, how so? because um, IMF actually um, uh very very clearly indicated that uh, the Kenyan economy was going to w- was uh, going to be the strongest economy immediately before COVID hit, um, and then with COVID we slumped to negative one point one percent or something like that, and then uh, they predict due to the measures that were put in place, our economy is going to ba- bounce back in a very very strong way. We'll be the we will have the strongest bounce back in this entire region. And, and honestly, so that's according to according to the IMF. The IMF, yes, the same guys who are loaning us. But now you see, well, let me explain something about governments. You know, um, how uh, and to our audience, I've done a good <laughs> amount of research for this. For this podcast. You know, I just checked your LinkedIn mm-hmm. uh, very recently, and mm-hmm. it reads sales engineer. So exactly us about government. So so oh, wow yeah. If I'm in sales, that should tell you that I know a, a bit about money. I, I know a bit, a bit about how uh, I have some interest in, in in economics. But anyway, so um, how governments how governments um, are able to control um, how how governments are able to make a strong economy is usually dependent on spending. I was telling someone today. Um, <clears throat> Whenever government spends money, the economy grows, right? Mm-hmm. So even if even if Uhuru was to go on top of of of, of Times Towers and throw, so maybe maybe just do a bit of explaining on how on how the economy grows when the government spends money. Okay, good. So um, so uh, it all boils down to the the economics of of liquidity, mm-hmm. the economics of money being present in the economy. Um, so what happens is um, when today Moretti has a thousand shillings, Moretti will be able to go to Mamamboga. He will be able to buy the thing that Mamamboga is selling. Mamamboga mm-hmm. will be able to go uh, uh, use that money, uh, go to the supplier, uh, the seeds, buy the seeds, plant the seed. So it cascades throughout the economy. So it's very, very critical that uh, money is in circulation but to a control extent so that you don't have inflation, right? So, and that's what I'm saying. Whenever the government spends money, uh, it's how the economy grows. When you want to stimulate an economy as a government, how you how you do that is by injecting money into the system, right? But now, it's usually much, much more um, valuable when you spend money in the system on actual things that will uh will will bring benefit to the people in this sense um if today who was to go uh, as I, was, I will tell you if who today was to go get, take a hundred thousand and throw it at everybody it will still stimulate the economy that's true but it is much much more valuable when 
they take that money and spend it on a project like a road on on power expansion um uhuru has done a very good job in terms of uh power penetration during the period of time that they have that kind of spending is what actually stimulates the economy right and so there is usually um so and, and a very good example actually is, uh, is what biden has done in the us they they they, they give people checks for 400 1400 usd that in itself has helped um sustain the american economy uh, it, uh has helped keep the american economy afloat that's right i agree with you that's yeah. exactly what the government was trying to do um when covid started with this kazi kavijana program where yes. mm. you had guys um cleaning around um just doing things things around and yeah. getting paid so mm. they're just trying to get money back into the system yeah but i don't think that had any lasting effect so it, for me mm. I, i think i think my challenge is um that not all that money mm-hmm. is getting back to like um revamping the economy as it should be because you have like these mega projects yeah. and a lot of this spending is on infrastructure on infrastructure and very huge projects mm-hmm. and you find that even even the companies um that are working on those projects mm-hmm. there's a good number of them that are foreign yeah and there's so many layers um and loopholes where money is lost such that the amount of money that actually um remains in in the economy mm-hmm. money which ideally should now um come and revamp the economy not not much of that is getting down um to the economy down to the common man energy and that's where the disconnect is we are having a lot of infrastructure we are growing in terms of infrastructure but in terms of what is trickling down to the common man energy wanjiko mm-hmm. it's not there Let, let let me let me put it this way um when uh so in terms of in terms of debt um there's usually also before before i because i think that is a whole different discussion because that's the next thing we're going to discuss let me address this issue that you've raised of the money not trickling down to the common money um when huru goes and gives that person 500 shillings per day right at at a singular level when you zero it when you zero it in to that particular person um there is uh, a possibility that you might not be able to appreciate the extent to which that helps uh, stimulate the economy but that money being in the system that new money that wasn't there coming in, into the system um actually does a massive role uh when you look at it in a, in a larger scale uh Kazikona yes, yes, is one aspect I agree. I, I have a friend of mine um who works for um one of the contractors for for the massive companies that have, have been given um those projects and Uhuru uh, actually uh was quite intentional in making sure that uh some of those uh works that can be done by local companies was given to local companies so that uh you don't loan us the money Mm. uh bring all your resources and take them back and also these big uh, uh, uh foreign companies are doing the project they have heavily employed kenyans to work within their ranks so um in terms of in terms of tax in terms of new job created we had the numbers on this no, 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 we 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 can always get them but i'm telling you from a fact that i know a few uh, uh, quite a few number of people that work within those um, uh, organizations like china we they have they have offices in kenya which where they've employed kenyans right so but what proportion but my point is this what 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 proportion of my that? point is this uh, when when you look at it from the point of uh this is new money that has gotten into the system that is one the second actually aspect also of the project is you are able to open up uh areas that were previously unopened my my boss comes from a place in moranga a very agricultural rich place before the projects be, before uhuru constructed the road that accessed them where they are mm-hmm. from moranga a very agricultural rich place to the main road it used to Uh, the, the journey was about one and a half hours but now with the road it takes about 30 minutes so some of these small things so you can imagine what that shortened trip 
is able to do to stimulate the economy when you cascade it in a larger scale. People are able to get their produ- 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 produces to the market quickly. Um, people are able to be more that's efficient true. and mm-hmm. efficient is money. Yeah, that's true. And that's the whole point of um, development in terms yes. of infrastructure. Yeah. Um, something which Uhuru hasn't done a better job he has tried, but there were those numbers going around today. Bro, let me tell you. There were those numbers going around today. I, I can give you the numbers if you want. Kenya right now, uh, with, within the last within the last 10 years that, that they've taken over, we have, I think, number two or number three best road penetration in Africa. Right? Within the same period of, the, the same period of time, our electrical connectivity is way, way higher that's okay, and I don't. No, think, no, no. I don't even think that's. I'm, I'm just I don't think that's that's um, a huge concern. I think mm-hmm. people people are just complaining that we are broke, but now there's you see, no money going around, and you see, so we might have the best roads, but we are sleeping hungry. I, I do agree with you, but you see, Tito, in the capitalistic kind of a world, uh, booms, uh, economic booms and busts are part of the cycle. As, an, as someone who's been in finance, you know how the economic graph looks like. We'll have a period of extended growth. We'll have a, a period of extended growth. And then inevitably, it it, 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 it busts, it elapses. That's true. And, and l- let me finish my point. So it is a system that is inevitable in the capitalistic world, especially where, and it's usually created, it, uh, that curve is usually created by the fact that we have credit. We are creating new money out of the blue. It's a bubble that is inevitably going to burst. But the burst usually is due to two reasons. Because, uh, two. Reason number one, it can be due to the economic machinery where, uh, where like the 2007, uh, 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 the 2007 um, uh, recession. The second one can be due to a blip in the system like covid so a blip in the system is much, 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 much easier to clear because uh, it's it hasn't uh, uh, because essentially what happens is people are holding on to their money. The big boys who spend money on projects, people who spend money on all these things, are holding on to their money to wait for the blip in the system to come in. Like now, in this case, it's due to COVID. And the moment the COVID issue has been cleared, the system goes back. It it happened when the first time in in, in last year. We, we noticed the moment Uhuru opened up the economy, finally jobs came back. Finally, the economy was beginning to heal because the recession was not caused by uh, the economic machine. It was caused purely by that bleep that is COVID. So my point is, right now we might be having this issue that we are facing of, of joblessness, but I can tell you for a fact, the moment... Um, the moment the economy is able to go back, we're able to open up. Jobs are, are inevitably going to come back because people will be able to, sp- the big boys are going to be able to, to spend their money to, to do the things that they're supposed to do. Uh, maybe their businesses expansion and R&D, whatever that causes money to come back into the system. And, 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 um, and we shall be able to, to, to be, to be whole again. So I'm just saying, yes, it's unfortunate. It is very unfortunate, but it is not Uhuru's fault. In fact, I tell people Uhuru might be one of the best presidents that this country will ever uh, will ever have. Um, I beg to differ. Differ? I beg to differ on a very public fact. Continue. Corruption. Let me tell you something about corruption. Uh, Tito, uh, be, be, the, the so biggest... this is you going on record defending corruption. I'm going on record defending logic. Let me tell you two things, Tito, that people are very mad uh, are, uh, about Uhuru, about <laughs> one of the things that people are very mad at Uhuru for. Two things. One, they are saying our debt is run away. Secondly, they're talking about corruption. Do you start, do you address the debt first or do we address the, the corruption first? Corruption. Let's address corruption first. Two things. Um, I usually say, one, Uhuru... Uh, has had a very transparent government in the sense that information decimation in terms of uh, even for the first time people attacking the president calling him Jaden and Wanjohi and all these things or Mashati with no consequences because um, Kenya has one of the most uh, I would say developed um, uh, country in terms of uh, information, right of expression 
uh, we, uh, as long as you're not defaming anyone no one is going to ask your question in this entire africa actually i'm i'm, I'm uh, maybe rival just by nigeria uh, or, or even i say we rival nigeria in terms of our freedom ex- of expression so so and right to information and the fact that maybe this is just maybe the fact that we are able to get that information could be a, a, i'm just saying could be that maybe uhuru uhuru's government has uh, we have more access to information in a more a uh, vibrant way than was previously possible so maybe corruption has always been a problem in this country it's just an in this particular regime and you can also appreciate that uhuru has been very out say patient uh, with people insulting him people uh, chastising him it's because he knows he's guilty no 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 it's because uh, our constitution allows us those kinds of rights and secondly um, i'm i'm not defending uh, corruption uh, let's the record show i'm not defending corruption but i'll tell you something tito my biggest problem with corruption that we have in kenya is where money is taken out of the country but if the money that was stolen was 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 and i don't think honestly that money is to the level that uh has been stolen because otherwise uh, organizations are like imf would imf wouldn't give us a loan IMF would not allow us that line of credit. They disal- they, they refuse to give Nigeria. Rwanda, the one that everyone is always uh, hailing, oh it's one of the best whatever. Pia they are they are tittering on being denied a loan by IMF. But why even with quote and quote the big corruption that Kenya has, for some reason we still are able to be given the loans. It's because our loan is sustainable. Right? So my point is even that corruption my biggest problem with the ca- corruption of Kenya is is that people take money out of a country but if they were to take that money if that money was to remain within our system Kenya wouldn't have a problem even with that corruption a, a case in point is South Africa South Africa has a, has a higher level of corruption than in, than even our country but for some reason um because for some weird reason people still invest within the country if someone steals from the government goes to a, a winery or does, does a, or or goes and invest in real estate um the money is able to circulate within within the economy right because let me tell you something tito we me and you we are very inexperienced in terms of economics but even top of top range economists in the world do not understand how debt and public fund works because countries even that have corruption but still for some reason they are able, still able to grow china also have very very is one of the most corrupt uh, countries in the world india corruption is so 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 bad but still for some reason the economies are still able to sustain growth year in year out because the money doesn't leave the system um i think you you mentioned about how we now have access to information yeah. and that's partly why we think that corruption is now worse mm-hmm. but the numbers don't lie yeah um if for example you look at the roads mm-hmm. that um Kibaki built and the yeah. cost the of, of the roads that he built yes right now we have very inflated uh projects yeah and that does not make any sense mm-hmm. so that that is corruption if you look at how the roads are built in mm-hmm. this country mm-hmm. Even even some of these major projects, there's not one single road that has been built where you will not find um, a politician, one of these big guys, benefiting in a very massive way yeah. privately. So, like the country is run by just a small group of people, and this is where you find that um, a lot of money is being spent, and that impact is not being felt on the ground. Like that is not there, the reason. There Actually, it was just this week where I think CBK reported that right now as we speak, we have the highest amount of money circulating the economy mm-hmm. in the history of Kenya. Mm-hmm. Right now as we speak. Yeah. But people are suffering left, right and center. So how do you explain that? You see, um, you, see, d- the, you see, the problem with it is mm-hmm. we, we, have, we have been so okay with corruption. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've come up with ways of stealing money. Yeah such that uh, money is being stolen yeah uh, by the same people that are running our government yes uh systems have been put in place to protect these people yes still with impunity yeah and at the end of the day it's the ordinary kenyans who are suffering even this whole imf issue 
people are not thinking economically. If you go to, or if you go, if you go on YouTube right now, I think on KTN's page, um, they were doing these interviews across the country, from Yosengishu to Kisumu to Eldoret to Nyeri, and you have ordinary Kenyans complaining, saying these loans are not helping us. Um, we don't want Uhuru. We don't want this and this. You see, the thing is, all these are not economists. Yeah, they, they've not done that, that, analysis. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting even agitated because. Let me make uh, my point. Yeah. They've not done um, any analysis on how Kenya works. Um, they're not economists. Which, which so, people? So, like all these ordinary Kenyans. Yeah. Um, okay, of course, I don't have the numbers, but I doubt we would have that many economists. <laughs> roaming, <laughs> roaming <the streets. laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But so th- the point is, um, things are different. Mm-hmm. The economic situation of the country is, is not good at all. Yeah, and ordinary Kenyans are feeling it, and they are protesting. Even this whole IMF issue, not 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 everyone understands. Actually, not many people understand how how it works and all that. It it's it's a political statement. People people are just people are just um, uh, people are just trying to make the government listen. Yeah, um, and try to have the government um, enact different policies. This is what I'll say. Um. The, the the debt problem of Kenya actually uh, I would say is accountability. Maybe the discussion that that as a just, country just use the right word yeah. corruption. No, no, no. Uh, accountability of how the money is spent. So um, let me let me let me put it this way: how how government borrows money is not uh, how Tito and Kabingu or Moretti would go borrow money, right? Um, you know how government borrows money, right? Uh, the 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 is it release or the print out? Not print out. This is digital, but they release bonds, right? And half people buy those bonds. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what happens is um, now these bonds. Um, when you hear Kenya has borrowed money from England, for example, it's not England the country that has gone into its central bank and given us money. It's usually private institutions, it's usually private citizens or, or government institutions like maybe the central bank of of, of, of the German uh, Germany can go borrow bond can come and buy the Kenyan bonds or uh, the pension fund for example can buy bonds. So what happens is the these bonds usually have interest, very low interests. Uh, some apparently, uh, economists don't understand why the the interest on these bonds has globally has been going down, right? But so the, I'm seeing the interest that you, as a government, you're going to pay the person who's bought your bonds. But now there is a there is a catch. Countries that countries that have good uh, that have a good um, credit history. They're able to get very good uh, rates. That's why Kina, US, and all these countries, um, you will find that they have they're able to borrow a lot of money because the interest rate that they are being given is low, right? But countries like small economies and ours, you might find the interest that they're being charged by these particular people is usually um, higher. In fact, so uh, the, the point I'm building to is. So interest is usually the most, the thing that you look at when it comes to these loans. The interest that you're being charged. And the interest that you're being charged is usually uh, dependent on the size of your economy. And secondly, it's usually uh, uh, determined by your loan paying uh, 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 credit worthiness. Mm. Let's put it that way. That, you, that if the bond is supposed to be cleared by March, you've cleared that bond. It's very, very critical that a country meets those. Otherwise, they go into something called default. And default is the worst thing that can happen in money borrowing circles. So, what happens is um, a, a country, uh, so, so I, I'll give you an example. A country like Greece. Uh, Greece, Greece had a very bad uh, scenario because they defaulted on their loans. And once you, the moment you default on your loans, you you charge very very high interest. You're not able to repay. You're you're, you're not you're not able. Your, your economy suffers because now government usually run on deficit. Most of them, so you're not able to meet your budgetary 
uh, estimates. And so the, the economy suffers. Let's go back to now uh, this issue of loans. So uh, this issue of, of, of bonds. So, so Tito, what happens is um, it is very, very critical that a country meets its financial loan obligations to these people who've borrowed loans. I'll give you an example. Kenya, ukiangalia debt ya Kenya, I think it's 7.2 billion. Is it around 7.2 billion? Trillion. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry, trillion, no problem. So half of the debt, that's 7.2 trillion, half of it is owned by Kenyans. Okay. Half of our debt is owned by Kina KCB, Kina Tito who has bought bonds, uh, companies like yours, uh, the, the, the money markets. Uh, it's Half of it is owned by Kenyans. And then ha- the other half is owned by foreigners. So it's the same thing. At Iso, the half that is owned by foreigners is not owned by those governments. It's owned by the economy. That's the right way to put it. That debt is owned by the economy of that country. If you can, maybe China is the only, actually the only country in the world where the government loans because the institutions that are loaning you mm. are owned by they the government. By the they are owned by the state. So as a country, when you're when you're taking out your loans. It is very, very critical. You ensure that the interest that you're paying on your debt, yeah, the interest that you're paying on your debt is lower than the rate at which your GDP is growing. That is what you should make sure. So that way, at the end of the day, the loan will cancel out and go down. If your GDP is growing faster than your, your, your in, the interest rate that you're being charged on these bonds, then your economy will do well, right? It only makes sense, isn't it? But now, uh, when you look at our economy, in the 10 years that Uru has taken over, our GDP has grown over 50%. Like, since the time Kibaki took over, the curve was like, uh, like this, going a bit flat, flat, and then suddenly it elapsed and went, and it shot up. So that means the, the interest that we're being charged on, 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 on the loans is sustainable enough for the IMF to give us loans to weather this storm that we're in right now. And the IMF itself is saying that after the COVID uh, period is over, we'll have the best bounce back in the entire region. Where did you get this data from? I can share with I'll share with you the, the, the links uh, for, the, for the places I, I get my information from. What happens, Tito, is that now we have a problem. Yeah? As a country, COVID hits. The economy needs to continue. So, in fact, what people don't understand is that IMF is owned by the 180 countries that are members of it. So, IMF in Akwanga Kama Sako, where you cannot meet your financial obligation due to something that happened suddenly. So, they give you very cheap loans, cheaper than the market rate. Right? So, um, the IMF, if it doesn't loan you money, Four things will might happen, or uh, 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 so. For for we have a scenario of four things. Thing number one, the country can do austerity measures, right? Where they decide to cut down on cost, cut down on employees or foot employees. Kwa Kenya Power, you'll start having issues with Kenya Power or Punguza Misharia Policy, for example. Uh, police were quite disgruntled. There is a lot that there are a lot of bad that comes with austerity measures. And again, economists have found out that austerity measures are bad during an economic downturn because again, you are taking money out of circulation. During a downturn, you need money into the system. Second thing that can happen is that you could, uh, for example, now uh, borrow money to to service the debt, and that is when the IMF comes in. Yeah. The third thing that would happen, you could print more money, which can cost, uh, which can now cost uh, hyperinflation. The fourth thing, and uh, now that uh, that a country can do when they find their, themselves in a situation that Kenya is in right now, is you could say, you know, screw it, I, I am going to default. I'm not going to pay the debt. So now, defaulting, as I told you earlier, is the, one, the worst thing that a country can do, right? So now the IMF comes in and says, no, we are going to pay, we are going to give you money that is going to be able to service the loans that are outstanding. Their requirement is very, very small. It's like a circle literary. So you're able to service the, the, the debt, that, the, the debt that are outstanding. 
and avoid going into default because as i mentioned default is one of the worst things that can happen so now this loan uh, uh who comes in and says uh we are going to use this money to buy vaccine or not to buy vac oh yeah you can use it to buy vaccines but again the thing with imf loans they come with spe- specific things like they will say uh, spend this money to expand the hospital that you're going to vaccinate people in or spend this money to finish up to you know to specific aspects of of the economy so now Tito, your question was how how the, the fact that it doesn't trickle down to the common mwananchi now my point is the mwananchi unfortunately in a, in a, in 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 an economic downturn they are usually the people that suffer the most suffer the most the common mwananchi because they do not have the liquidity uh, i would say flexibility that someone with means has right Uh, 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 someone who has means when they have they have divested their 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 portfolio in such a way that hospitality uh, like sakinawuru i'm sure if hospitality kishindwa they are still in banking a bank uh, 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 hospitality kifungwa they are still in milk so they have divested their money in, in the economy in such a way they are still in yeah they're still in milk They, no they are not stealing milk oh, they are, they are in milk <laughs> okay. oh, i see how that can be a pun but that was not a pun uh, but my point in all this honestly is debt is not a problem debt is a good thing countries need debt to service their deficit agreed so the problem you're saying is even if this money comes into the system and you you've given a very good uh, point we are central bank in saying in the history of kenya we've not had um, the kind of money that is in circulation as i mentioned earlier in zapata what central bank is saying the amount of money they have printed the amount of money that they have released into the system is the highest but there is a very high likelihood that that money is lying in people's banks right is lying in people's banks because we don't spend money in a pandemic i, I work in I, i work i i work in the capex industry and i can tell you for sure the moment who opened projects started opening up because people have money in their accounts but it is not flowing into the system it is not flowing into the economic machinery so the only way See, let me let me finish my point the only way the common mwananchi will be able to benefit is if the big boys who have money in their at the tito i'm sure probably if you're being honest this is the highest you've saved up since uh, since you started working in this period of time because you don't spend money uh, on things you want to go to one come maybe unaza photo afu jipata uko auna rent or something can happen in this capi uji pata kona covid and you need immediate you know like people are holding on to money they're not spending but the moment people start spending money Let me give you a very practical example. If for 1500 Biden ali piana. Do you know before that people are holding on to money. But if for 1500 Maurice, you're not arguing no, no, from no. the perspective of a common mwananchi. No 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 no. Let me expl- let me give you a very practical example Tito. 14 eat this 1400 that uh, Biden gave out. People wasted it. People went buying the new PS. People went buying the there was a surge in buying luxury clothes. The Yeezys and of this world were bought by that money. And what did that do? it helped stimulate the economy it helped now this company is they're able to spend more money in r&d they're able to buy more leather from where they buy it from the the, the people who buy the ps uh, the shops now they're able to uh, employ more people so that my point is tito how the economy works is if money is not lying in the bank it is making rounds in the system Central bank I might tell us they have the highest really, I think I think our problem here is not exactly how the economy works. Wow. It's exactly about what's not working. What's not working is and, COVID. And what's not working? Uh-huh. Uh, you alluded to something that uh, I know the GDP of um, Kenya has been growing. That's 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 true. Mm. But the rate at which we are spending mm-hmm. in even in terms of recurrent expenditure. Like we we are running our budget um, at a deficit which is good. Which, it's not good if we are not producing t- as much but the numbers Moriti, Moriti, the numbers show us that we are producing Moriti, so much the balance of trade is very imbalanced but 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 i'm telling you the for- shilling has been weakening it's it's been at at its weakest i think since i don't know why i think, I think it has been at, at the lowest point the reason is every every, every there is no uh, i stand to be corrected but i'm sure most currencies in the world have devalued 
because money is not making rounds in the system tito i'm telling you our problem do you know do you know china um grew 18.1% the highest since the 1980s in, uh, in the previous year and that is understandable that is understandable tito so, because so our our problem but, is not a global but no what about the other countries problem. what about the other 200 and something countries tito that have suffered in you, the hands of covid you cannot compare us ourselves with europe But the developed countries but who, I can tell you for a fact the economy is also being hampered. Do you know China? What do you, know, do you know why China China's economy was one of the best performing in the world? It is not people people blame people are saying it's because they brought us the virus and then they they ramped up their capacity. No. China already had the capacity to be able and they had been supplying to the world uh, or, or, or even That's before a very covid. Move by China. No, I'm saying they had been they had been supplying the world even before covid. So when covid hit they found them with the capacity to be able to supply to the world whatever the world needed when your factories were shut down. So it's not an issue of covid it's already they had been creating capacity year in year in year out year out. So when the covid finally came they had the capacity when your countries are shut down they had the capacity to create for you masks. They had the capacity to provide for you medicine. They had the capacity to be able to provide what the world needed, not because of COVID, but because of the capacity they had been building. So it's not surprising that when when the rest of your economies were shut down because of, of travel restriction and all that, China was able to stay afloat because they had the capacity to do it. So maybe so, we need to check how much power we've given China so, over the so, years so, because of our addiction. So what are we saying? Shoes. What are we saying about our situation? What 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 I'm saying about our situation is this, Tito. Our problem is not so much about corruption at the moment or our runaway loans it is a blip in the system due to covid and once Moretti, covid is left Moretti, our economy is going to be the highest biggest bouncing back in in Moretti, in this entire speaking as if you're not a kenyan I am kenyan I am fully aware as COVID, a kenyan covid started barely a year ago march of 2020 yes our problems we've had our problems since as far back as Is it 2018 or 2017? But Tito, facts so, don't... Moriti, you're trying to sanitize a very ugly situation here. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to sanitize an ugly situation. I'm just saying facts don't usually care about feelings, Tito. We need to be objective. We need to look at the numbers. We need People to see... People who are sleeping hungry have feelings, Moriti. Tito, let me tell you something. When you put... Even when American NGOs are borrowing money to come and squander here uh, by living in Karen they are executives living in Karen they show very gleam pictures of africans emaciated and crying that's what that's what they do but so my point is you can make a situation even more emotional if you want to but as a president I, hear me out Moriti, i'm just going to tell you that not everyone is going to hear this podcast Tito, just hear me out just hear me out <laughs> As a president, as a president you are the president of 40 million Kenyans, right? You are the president of 40 million Kenyans. I am very sympathetic. I know people who've suffered greatly in the hands of COVID. I know people who've, who've suffered greatly in the hands of unemployment and uh, caused by the economic downturn. But Tito, I can tell you for a fact, as a president of a country, you can't afford to zero in into the individual emotions of every Kenyan. Nothing will get done. As a president you look so, you look at the bigger picture Tito. You have to look at uh how 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 do I manage a larger scale of situations as opposed to individual situations. That is my point. Fine. What then do you say about how we've not had we've not created an enabling business environment? Uh you have you have companies running away from Nairobi. Can we check left right and center? Ease of doing business index. We see just, just check. where Kenya is. Just check. Sawa. Because I and can just, tell you for and, a fact, and check, and check, we and check are, its position of yeah. consecutive years. Yeah, and no see problem. If we have been improving. No problem. Is of doing business in Africa. Number one in Africa right now is Mauritius. Sawa sawa. So Mauritius has been number one uh, for three consecutive years. Number two is Rwanda. Number three is Morocco. Number four is Kenya. In the entire Africa is of starting to do business uh, starting uh, business we have been consistent in the last three years so i'm just saying in as much as we have emotional uh, uh 
it's easier to get emotionally riled up on social media, but what are the facts on the ground? Our economy was in a place where we had issues due to uh, maybe the interest rates going up or whatever, but I can tell you for a fact, Tito, we have the strongest economy. We are, we, uh, the, the, the strongest economy in Sub-Saharan Africa, I think, is South Africa, Nigeria, then us. To me, Peter Angola, who have one of the highest oil reserves in this in the in the Sub-Saharan Af- uh, world, in the in the southern em- hemisphere, we have a stronger economy than Ghana. Even this Ethiopia that people tout, our economy is strong. And one of the strongest things about the Kenyan economy is it's not usually pegged on one thing. Nigeria, Nigeria's economy is pegged on oil. South Africa's economy, there is a lot of minerals that that strengthen their position. But what can you say is Kenyan's st- a strong point? Our economy is very, very well distributed. It's very well evened out. So, I always just say, in as much as we hate Uhuru, let's also appreciate the capacity, because Uhuru's presidency has, has all been about creating capacity. The capacity that Uhuru has created to position this country as one of the strongest economies in Africa. As we finish, I, honestly, I, I, I want to say um, that Uhuru has had a very unfortunate run as a president because of the circumstances that surrounded him and the vision that he had was definitely going to be very expensive, right? The, the vision that he had for the, for the country. People compare Uhuru to Kibaki. I'm like, uh, anybody taking over from Moi, even me, I would have uh, grown the economy. But Kibaki... That's a lie. No, no. My, my point is, Moi had taken the country to negative... An average Kenyan would, would have driven the country. But, but if we don't know what you could have done. <laughs> no, that's an example. Goodness, can you take okay. a joke? Okay. So, but uh, uh, Kibaki, Kibaki was coming from a, ve- a very comfortable position to show improvement. But, uh, and he did a good job in bringing back the businesses that had ran away. He did a very good job in inspiring the economy into a growth path. Uhuru's vision was to create capacity to make Kenya now a middle income country. And in my opinion, in terms of the of, of the infrastructure that he's put in place, in terms of in terms of um the 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 the, the capacity that is created even for starting business, Kenya had, I think has the best access to government services in Africa through the Huduma Center initiative. You can access all government services including a passport through Duma centers because um, of Huru's efforts. The cost might have been very, very high, right? But as I, as I said, debt is never a problem. We should never be scared of our debt. We, it's a small price to pay at the beginning, but then the fruits that we stand to benefit in the long run end up, uh, end up, end up making the country a very valuable asset even for foreign investors and even us. Uh, by extension. At the moment, things might be thick. But I'm just saying um, the future looks very bright for our country. Um, so as, as we bring this to a close, I feel like, Moretti, you've tried, you've made your attempt at defending the current le- regime. Um, oh, yeah, you've tried. I must give you that. And we are not saying that our government is a total failure. I mean, thank God we have, um, we have some peace. Uh, we are not having a civil war. Freedom uh, of expression. For all our problems, we are having good roads. Very good um, roads. At that, go to Uganda and Tanzania. You'll know Kenya is Europe. At least we have a Kenya power and lighting company. Um, at least it exists uh, with all its problems. So we are not saying that we live in a jungle. Eighty-five percent access to power. Tanzania has, is it 35? Five days a week. Yes. But 35 days a week. You people. Anyway, mm-hmm. you can't please Kenyans. Honestly. What, what, what we are saying, mm. I think Moretti, the complaint that has been there has been um, from the ordinary Monanji. And from where I stand, the disconnect I see even with the government s- strategy is mm-hmm. like there's a lot of focus on, on the macro, on the, on the, on the macro mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. But the microeconomy is neglected, and the, and the majority of the Kenyan economy mm-hmm. is um, is micro. It's 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 the the, the household. The no, every economy has micro and macro. 
the, the I'm saying the majority of our economy mm-hmm. is um, the small scale uh, business people. What is what's the Tito? What's the difference between macro and micro? Micro, macro, uh, ma- but even if I was in Europe as an individual, I'm part of a macro economy, right? Macro and micro, right? If my the money that I go to 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 I pay by the bus with is part of a of microeconomics, isn't it? It is, but I'm talking about the households. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the households and those small biasharas that, that, that make up um, like the bulk of the Kenyan economy. Mm-hmm. And from where I stand, I feel like that, that is what has, has, has been neglected. Like the government keeps on making policies um, that are very, um, that are very grandiose, mm-hmm. but they, 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 they fail to address how the common man is mm-hmm. going to um, feel that impact mm-hmm. and this this issue about corruption and uh, accountability where our government has done terribly thanks to access to information we now know how bad that is mm-hmm. um, projects are being done to benefit private persons we now have um, an entire railway line that cost billions of money that's not being used at all um, because of have, covid we have no. Don't say that, please. Yeah, it's because of COVID. This jail that's being operational as it, it's been in losses. Of course, we don't expect to break even within the first one year. And I do not think we should even attempt to. It's but, good, but those losses was, are just those losses are just huge. Mm-hmm. So mismanagement is just it's it's just pretty obvious, and and that is not something that we should we should not defend the government on that front. And Kenya is a very rich country and it's a very good economy if if we had better management i believe kenya would actually be at the leading economy in, in in africa so the complaint largely has been around corruption mm-hmm. and especially how corruption has been normalized because our president acts um like he can do nothing about it like he's not the president so the the cry of the common monarchy is not it's not even economic, uh, as, as I was telling you. We are it's crying an emotional because one. we don't have, we cannot see the leadership. We uh, cannot see the leadership from 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 the leader. Like when COVID came, we had the COVID billionaires scandal. Like we have people that are ready to benefit privately from any government um, project that that is uh, that, that that is set up, and that is what people are um, are crying about. We do not. We feel like we don't have um, a leadership that can um, that can properly ensure we have integrity in the management of our money. If we, the government, we saw it um, like dealing with cash and everything, everything was working well. Mm-hmm. At least as citizens, we'll have that confidence in our government that okay, we might not see the results immediately. But we trust our government to have the best plan for us. But because we see the way things are being managed, even when you promise us stuff, it's usually hard for us to trust this government. I, I think that's the problem. And, and, and Kevin, um, even as we finish, um, I'll say this: I am not. I, I corruption is horrible. It's it's terrible. It, it's it's taking money from the poorest person and giving it to the richest person. By all means, I agree. But I'm just saying that. Our debts, even with our corruption, is still sustainable. In the sense that we, excuse me, we are still able to grow, even with the circumstances of corruption. That's the first point. Second point. I'll give you a a, a, a scenario. Um, we you you have Kabingu you're earning two hundred k, and then Kabingu decides I am going to construct houses to to boost my earnings, right? So we have Kabingu earning 200K and then you have the same Kabingu in a period where he's taken a loan to pay for the construction of the house. His income goes down by 50,000 or even 80,000 he's earning less. He has to put in some measures to tighten the himself for this period. And then there's the Kabingu in the post loan period, in the post the house being constructed period. Which Kabingu of those three is the happiest? The post-loan. The post-loan. Yeah. Which Kabingu is the saddest? 
the kabingu during the period of time when you had to cut down on your on your spending you had to maybe live in a smaller house so that you can be able to service a loan is happier is sadder than even the kabingu before because 200k was, was good enough that is a story of kenya and again, those are the three I phases think no one is a dis- is disagreeing with what you're saying yeah the problem is is us the, trusting our yes, government i'm just saying the accountability is low and maybe that's something maybe uh, make have put a stain on uhuru not so much about the loans people think it's a loans but i think kenyans are very emotive because of how the money is being spent and how they feel like the money is getting stolen yeah i i'm not going to play the devil's advocate on that and i agree uh, we need better accountability i'm paying my taxes uh, and, and i need to feel like i'm not take paying my taxes and giving to a guy to go to the bahamas right so i'm just saying even with that, with that our loan is not a problem yeah. our problem is a problem of accountability and maybe that's something maybe the president uh, needs to mull over and and consider so in the end you have agreed with Tito I have agreed with the fact that currently no 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 no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying the the debt issue is, is a very emotional one um uh but our country is sustainable and I will support Uhuru even if it takes more loans because clearly the numbers support us being able to service even a bigger loan i do not believe our debt is sustainable imf chooses to disagree our gdp growth rate seems to disagree, disagree and our on low... conditions that we are taxed more no 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 can i ask you that those are usually can, can can i finish up on on the story of greece what happened with greece do you know what happened with greece tito No you I know you I know you 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 spent the entire weekend just just go ahead. <laughs> no 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 what happened with Greece in an in a nutshell is the fact that they did not have control or, or they did not have control or, or, uh, on their fiscal policy because they are part of the EU they're not able to print more money to be able mm-hmm. to to sort out their 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 issue the EU was not uh, was a bit reluctant to giving them money and so finally when when they came to their to their rescue they had been borrowing money uh, actually the issue was lack of transparency people were coming borrowing the money but the, the, the amount of money they are saying that they owe is much more than what they have so the interest rates that their loaners are giving them are still low but the problem is much much worse so when it finally exploded uh loaners decided no we are not going to give you interest we are not going to give you those low interest in fact we might we are not going to give you money so the country is stuck So you do not have you're not able to print money to to sort out the issue because your euros are printed in Syria and then you do not you're not able to have access to money uh from uh from from lender of lenders it got so bad that the amount of money that was physically present in the country was equivalent to everybody getting 5000 shillings 50 50 euros 50 euros so even if you have 100000 today in your account You go to the ATM you're told you can only withdraw 45,000 for the 45 euros. It that that's the risk of not having money in circulation. Right? So I'm just saying and what really helped that uh, helped them out of that conundrum is having something we call the trika, the European Union, the IMF and I think the European Bank came together, gave them money to get out of this issue. And those usually come with austerity measures you're told cut down cost here do one two three we need more accountability and that's why i'm saying probably even the imf loan is a good thing in the sense that it will force us to be more accountable so that's my point and imf agrees they give us the lowest interest rate that they, they could muster i saw that uh, you saw that announcement that they, they i put it in the group they they give us the lowest interest rate to amepiana i think in the entire africa because that's how sustainable our debt is they agree that our debt is sustainable uh, 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 against the interest rate and against our gdp growth so our debt is sustainable our issue is accountability and maybe that's where the discussion needs to go corruption <laughs> anyway thank you so much Tito, for that very exciting discussion thank you for having me i i think i think you were over prepared no no i was not over prepared i just prepared next time you should give me a heads up mm. You'll come more prepared. <laughs> This is you knew what you were discussing just came. <laughs> yeah, anyway, guys, we do a lot of research when it comes to these things so yeah, to begin my coffee. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Um till next time. Bye.